It's not a good situation. Although, let me throw in a caveat there and say that most of you, I'm sure, share with me a lack of true fear about this. We are observers, and we hopefully will embrace reality as close as we can come to actually grabbing it and wrapping our minds around it. So when I say fear, I talk about uncertainty as much as anything. But uh, Jay is back, and how are you? Hey, I'm good. How are you, Jeff? Still here. Yeah, we're something. Yep, and I'll yeah. take it. <laughs> what have you been doing? Uh, well, I'm involved in a, in a rather lengthy, uh, actually, actually a feature film production, and uh, it uh, started out as being a fairly, what I thought was going to be a fairly simple project, but it's that chance. evolved now. It's it's gotten bigger and bigger, but it's gotten more interesting. So, well, you're busy um, already. I don't understand how you even begin to approach this kind of thing. It's uh, amazing. Well, it's uh, uh, filmmaking is not for the faint of heart, and if you don't have any finances like me, then it's even worse for you. Yeah, well, that's and of course, a tough nobody's going to finance any of the films I make, so I have to do it myself, which is fine because there's an audience for it. But uh, it's an amazing amount of work. It's yeah. incre- incredible. Uh, subject? Can you give us a hand on the subject matter of this? Uh, well, it's about uh, actually, yeah, it's about a um, there's a myth from India. Mm-hmm. About a, um, uh, a a being who will come at the end of time, mm-hmm. and his name is Kalki, and he his name is what his Calvin name is Cal- Calvin Klein Calvin Klein you say yeah not 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 Calvin Klein no he's not gay no <laughs> and uh, he uh, um, he comes at the end of time to basically destroy the uh, the archons or the uh, the evil alien force, which is destroying the Earth and the humans. Uh, bring him, and, bring him, bring him here as soon as you can get a hold of it. Well, yeah. So he is, he didn't come, so I decided I just you know invent him and put him in a movie because uh, we need him really bad. Well, maybe the and, collective uh, unconsciousness it, will manifest something. Yeah, who knows? Well, you know, you never know. I mean, who would have thought that you know Tunisia would have a rebellion overthrow the dictator there? So you know, anything can happen at this point. That's uh, the end. That's you know, that is probably the most operative, pertinent statement one can make now. And I've yeah, been saying I mean, it for we, years. We really don't know. Anything you know. can happen. I, I the, everything yeah. is on the table. Yeah, I have, a, I have a niece, and she's trying to figure out whether she wants to go to college or not. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, my God, you know, when I decided to go to college, you know, there, I knew there was going to be a United States and an economy and and all those things when I got out. And and she, you know, I was like, well, what's the point of going? What is what is the, the point? What does she want yeah. to study? Well, medicine. But you know, what's the no, point of going? Please. It's not going to be any world. And now think about it. You want to study medicine? That's fine. But the average doctor now still knows nothing about nutrition, still knows nothing about actual causal factors in most disease conditions, still knows nothing about honest alternative, quote alternative, herbal or other technological advances, which were made royal rife in the 1930s and others. They know nothing, and they are scared to death to step outside of the paradigm of the loser license. Well, they will, and you can't really blame them. They're good fixing, you know... Broken legs. That's all they're so good other for. Other than that, I'm, I, I stay go as to far a good away Chinese, from them as possible. Go to a good Chinese doctor. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Oriental medicine is still the best, and uh, that's where I go anyway. And uh, you know, it's really about chi and uh, and 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 how to collect the uh, the forces that grow life and, and into your body through food and, and how you uh, breathe and exercise and meditate and. And uh, instead, what do most city. people do? They attract the forces that negate life. Well, they do. That's what's going on right now, and and this is being encouraged by the people in charge, who are are, are doing everything they can to enforce every single negative feeling uh, that there is, until we're just swimming in a world of. Uh, you know, where if you actually meet someone who's positive without drugs, it's almost an amazing thing to find. And uh, so, I don't know, it's, it's we're at the end of this thing, um, that's for sure. Whether it turns into a new world order, 
nightmare mm-hmm. or falls into total and complete chaos. It's, it's, a, it's a cycle really where end. we're at. Yeah, end of a cycle, whatever it is. Okay. It really is, yeah. and uh, yeah. it's going to get really scary. Yeah, yeah. No doubt. I posted today, just to give you folks an idea, close to 100 news stories at Rand Yes, you did. I mean, uh, including it's the amazing. financial I stories. I can't keep I, up. Well, I can't either. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's absurd. And what do we have? The, the Zionist uh, Israeli lunatics now have admitted that they created the Stuxnet virus. The, yep. the Iranians have been pushed back four to five years, so boast Mossad agents and their, their flunkies. The Iranians, meantime, want to go ahead and fire up Bashir. But that's bringing from the Russians a lot of, uh, a lot of warning, a lot of trepidation. They don't yeah. want them to do it. They're talking about another Chernobyl potential. Uh, the Stuxx virus could quite likely be multi-generational and undetectable and set to go off every six months, every 12 months, every 18. We don't know. Nobody knows. And this stuff is getting to be absolutely science fiction in its potential and its actual applications. Well, you know, you have to ask yourself at a certain point, you know, you're going to start getting overlapping overlapping destructions and um, and then they're going to start uh, dominoing on, their, yeah. on themselves and That's and uh, you That's know true. you can only pull false flags and these things to a point and then mm-hmm. at a certain point there's so much chaos that not even the people doing the false flags know mm-hmm. who's really doing what true. and that's where we're headed and it's a total chaos and I have to agree with, uh, with people like Henry Macau who said it's some kind of Sabbatean thing going on. Um, the more I look, the more I just have to say that it does appear that you know there's a group of people that seem to have been infected by some kind of demonic possession, almost. Yeah, I honestly agree, and I, I think there are, there are several groups who have almost coalesced into a, yeah. a single focal point of evil. Yeah. Uh, you can call them whatever you want; it doesn't really matter to me. It's uh, it's blackness. It's satanic evil. And there are, these, are, these are not human beings. Um, I agree. And uh, the more I look, and the more I'm convinced of it. And uh, the uh, the amount of happiness that, that they get from what they're doing is... They absolutely get off on death, agony, destruction, <clears throat> greed. They cannot possibly have too much power, wealth, control, toys. Uh, these people are psychotic. They are absolutely sociopath. No, 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 no. Psychopathic. They're not psychopathic. Yeah. Sociopathic is too kind. Then, but they're not. They don't operate within a normal human paradigm. Now, I can say that, uh, but I can't say that without pointing out the simple fact that tragically they are successfully configuring the younger generations to think and behave within at least the periphery of that ugly, hideous paradigm of destruction and oppression and subjugation. And the young people are going right along with it. Well, I mean, honestly, so did my and your generation. Um, We got sucker punched in the 50s with television. And then, uh, frankly, the more I look at it, the more I realize the 60s was pretty much just a big setup. And... uh, and then, you know, you look at every single thing that happens since about 1955 or so, and you can see that there's a steady progression of mind right. control sure. until um, it, it, its goals appear to be to destroy anything that can rise up against it. Anything. I do anything. not like uh, Eisenhower, never have, never will, uh, but he did make one good speech, and he was right. He did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He had to say it at the very end, but he did yeah. it. Yeah. I don't know if it was a moment of uh, of clarity or a moment of, of uh, morality or, or compassion or guilt or whatever, but... Uh, oh. Probably. Probably. Yep. Yeah. But uh, we're, we are folks at Lockheed, Lockheed uh, Martin or whatever the hell they are now. Uh, they are they are as, as evil as it gets. Perfect example. Perfect example. Oh, yeah. I know a lot of stories about Lockheed Martin. Yeah. Oh, boy. Well, there you go. So uh, you just go down the stories that, uh, you know, I'm, I don't have the only news service on the net, but it's a pretty damn good representative cross-hatched view of reality. It's not, uh, it's not for the faint-hearted. No. Because it's real. Uh, pretty we've intelligent, got, though. 
Yeah, well, thank you. We, we do our best, just like you do. Ten-foot wall of water due in California. Month-long yeah. arc-like storm predicted. Biblical storm predicted for California. All possible. Uh, interesting in that story about the fall of the Roman Empire and climate change back then, too. Oh, yeah. The floods in Oz now have moved south to Victoria. Uh, bad stuff going on all over the place of oh. many, many different kinds and colors and configurations. It's not a, it's not a one-trick pony. This is really something. Hang on. We'll be right back with Jay in just a minute. And we continue our conversation with Jay Widener, who's with us once a month, despite his incredibly busy schedule. We very much appreciate that, Jay. 400 and... No, 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 no. 4,400 water buffalo and cattle died in North Vietnam of the cold. Yeah. Now, that's... We- that, see, this is getting to be real weird. Uh, it's It's... It's all jet stream related, according to Piers Corbin, who was on last week. Brilliant man. Yeah. He's not only a, a meteorologist, he's an astrophysicist. Yeah, and kudos for having him on, man. That's just awesome. Yeah, well, I guess everybody else will have him on their shows now. But, um, that's the way it works. <laughs> yeah, but uh, uh, he is, he's my new hero. So I agree. Now, did yeah. kid build, when he was a kid, he built yeah. his own uh, saltwater barometer on his house? Yeah. That took a 30-foot-tall, convoluted piece of PVC. I mean, that's brilliant. The guy's amazing. Yeah, he is. And he's Sorry. the kind of original thinker that, um, you know, in, in, you know, just a couple, 50 years ago would have been uh, yeah. destroyed yeah. by the establishment. And now he's uh, in a position because of YouTube and, you know, you and and the Internet to to actually get somewhere with this thing. And yeah. Uh, yeah. he's on it. He's just right on it. And, well, he had, uh, he had, I urge all of you who are uh, archive subscribers to go to that archive and listen to Piers. Uh, he was uh, and is. I mean, I should. I, mean, I, I think I'm going to put him up as a free listen. That's what I'm going to do. People need to hear that. He had a great time. I think you've got to have him yeah. on more often. Well, he's, um, he's be, pretty busy, he, but, yeah. He can keep track. It'd be nice to hear what he has to say about Robert Felix's work, um, if he knows about it even. Yeah, it'd be. Uh, it would be interesting. I'll, well, yeah. if I get another chance, I'll uh, bring that up. Uh, Robert. Robert has been doing his thing for quite a long time. I think I had him on 15 years ago. Yeah. And he he called all this pretty much. He, yeah. he did, so. and you know it's it's pretty much electromagnetically driven and. Um, I mean, I can't tell you what's going on because I don't know, but uh, I can tell you, you know, that I do know that birds and fish are both extremely sensitive to electromagnetic fields, and um, I think we might get, be getting like a um, a peppering of holes in the field, and the birds may be hmm. flying into to holes mm-hmm. of some kind, and then hmm. they just get lost and bump into each other and you know lots of things like that go on and uh, I think there are a number of things going on uh, but what's really going on that that should be of concern for everyone are these lunatics with keyboards and modems who are (laughs) putting these asinine imbecilic theories out there to try to explain these things phosgene gas a World War I failed gas weapon I mean this come on it, it, anyway, that that's the alarming part for me. I, stuff happens, okay? Yeah. We don't know what's going on, really. But we do know you can't ascribe one handy-dandy little excuse for it all. doesn't work. Yeah. Too many things. All the crabs that died in England died of the cold. Fish die in a river from uh, toxicity. Uh, sal- what, who was it salmon? B.C. salmon? Have a virus. Oh, don't forget Argentina and okay, uh, Argentina. the Amazon. Right. And all the fish that froze there. Yep. And, I mean, yep. you know, this this cold snap really has been going on for about oh, over a year now. Correct. Um, people just don't really, real, really realize how cold it was last year, too. That's right. And, and this is going on, and it just seems to be increasing. And um, right now the West Coast is being hit by a... Huge Pineapple Express, which has been going on for for months now, and yeah. uh, no, still no two months. Yeah, no uh, Aleutian, Alaskan, northerly storms descending to the south east, not happening. Uh, no, lots of wetness pouring up 
to the north, battering the Pacific Northwest with rain and heading up into Canada, Montana, turning freezing cold, and then, and then coming back down again. Roaring and, right back down, too. Yeah, and getting the rest of the country. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this is, this is really unusual. And uh, yeah. I don't know. I heard a person tell me the, uh, I think it was uh, today, said that they knew a guy who took a boat from Hawaii to San Francisco uh, just this week, and he made it in like six days, and one went one 18-hour stretch without moving the sails at all. Wow. Yeah. That's I mean, a straight ripping. line. That's a straight line. Wow. Yeah, that, that's just a straight line and just huh. ride, riding the, the pineapple. And uh, so, you know, right now the, the weather... Is, is, is you know we, we've kind of I think you know realize that the weather is being driven by by solar energy more than anything else. Well, all, all sun. It's all it's all related yeah. to the sun. And and, and that's just, that's a really good place to be because then we can start thinking about the other things that the sun does and realize how really precarious this whole situation is and maybe start doing something about it because uh, we're you know one good CME away from 6th century B.C. And I mean, in one second it could happen. And, um, and we know it's happened before. And True. Uh, we're, we're not. We're, this True. isn't a fantasy. No, no. And uh, it's one Maybe. thing to uh, know the scientific facts. It's another thing to actually sit down and, <clears throat> and figure out the ramifications of what would happen. And the ramifications right now are so incredible it's so profound that they would literally wipe out the human race. Some people, would, <laughs> excuse me. Some people would cheer that the human race is wiping out the planet. <laughs> so I don't know. All right, we need yeah. some kind of a happy medium here. I, I guess we could drop the word happy and just come up with a medium, but <laughs> something, something's coming. Hang on, back in a minute with Jay. Okay. Yeah, we're back. The, I'll tell you, the, the stories on the Internet, just, <laughs> I don't know how much crazier they can get. Uh, <laughs> Laura Eisenhower, I guess a granddaughter, says, Unity consciousness will collapse the military-industrial complex. Now, don't everyone laugh at once. Just laugh. It's absurd. This This kind of... Writing this kind of uh, appealing to the the new age new age oriented non thinking non intellectual public is I, I guess I don't know I guess it serves some purpose uh, it just fills up space but it's absurd there's nothing going to stop the military industrial complex not unity consciousness nothing except eventual entropy or transition into some other form of, of uh, dictatorial uh, dominance and abuse of the mass populace. This is this is just uh, crazy. And you get these these things like phosgene gas is killing the birds in the air, and we stole it from Saddam Hussein. I mean, so it's a World War One gas. I don't know. It just goes Pretty on. Tough. Unity consciousness will collapse the military industrial. Co I wonder what Ike would think about his granddaughter <coughs> spewing a mouthful of that. Okay, anyway, what do you want to talk about here? Well, I mean, <clears throat> there's a lot of things to talk about. Um, one of the stories that uh, you have up is uh, one that I find uh, uh, very interesting, and uh, it's about uh, uh, a group of uh, 911 researchers who. Um, Managed to get a Freedom of Information document through the, a document through the Freedom of Information Act, FOIA, and uh, uh, which was basically a list of all the people that had rented space at the World Trade Center from the time it you know it started oh, until yeah. the time it collapsed. Yep, yep. yep. And it's uh, it's a fascinating little bit of uh, of information because. Virtually the entire World Trade Center was empty for almost the entire time that it was there. And in some cases, it appears as if <clears throat> it was at, you know, 90% empty and, um, and there was nothing on the floor. There was no carpeting. There was no tiles in the ceiling. No, it was never, the building was never apparently actually finished off to a very yeah. large degree. 
Exactly, and um, and 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 now you know. Um, here, here's one of the problems with the I mean, There's many problems with the whole nine one one thing, but one of the things that <clears throat> that um, you have to think about with nine one one is whatever uh, theory you buy with it, you still cannot explain how the buildings fell at free fall speed. Whether you believe that a, a 747 did it, or you believe that okay, there was explosives or thermite, whatever you believe um, cannot explain the free fall, because even if the floors are pancaking, there's still resistance right. between the floors. So it would still, no matter what you thought, it would still not fall at free fall speed. No yeah, way. Yeah. Not, not happening. And you have to wonder if there were even floors in a lot of this build, these buildings is where I'm going with this. What's interesting is right after huh. 911, a University of Tennessee, the head of the University of Tennessee architectural department came out with a very odd statement and she said that, uh, that the World Trade Centers did not have the structural supports, that it was they were unibody built, and uh, they were essentially hollow. And uh, you know, she was laughed at and everything, and, and I, I didn't pay that much attention to it at the time. But now that I see that their occupancy rate was so low, and you have to wonder what was in it for Silverstein to buy it since he didn't have any occupants. And uh, he didn't ninety-nine years. He, he leased yeah. it for ninety-nine years. Yeah, well, what a deal! And he got double indemnity for it made four game. billion dollars or something. First guy yeah. to uh, double insure a building on the basis of terrorism. Uh huh. Yeah, and and you, and then you look at the <clears throat> the curious uh, case of the Israeli art students on floor ninety-one. And then it really gets interesting because, for one thing, it's illegal to live inside an office building. Yet the Port Authority mm -hmm. gave these uh, students permission to live on floor mm -hmm. 91. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, so they're living up on floor 91. I don't know if you've covered the story or not, but... Um, no, the, I, did, the, Jay, the I did not. The window out of the World Trade Center... Uh huh. On floor 91, and they built a little balcony out over the perched out over the edge of the building. Didn't know that. Yeah, and then they took their clothes off and had a helicopter fly by and photograph each one of them naked on this little perch. Then Excuse me. Perch. For what? Well, it was all part of a project called Gelatin, which you can actually see on the internet. You can go to the that site that's on your on your thing and follow through and. Uh, and find all this, and and uh, <clears throat> so this is where it gets interesting. Okay, the in 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 the gelatin book, which was put out by these art students about their project, there's a drawing of one of them standing out on this pedestal, this cantilever, and um, there's a body falling, and it says 300 meters, with a little arrow pointing down, and it says 300 meters. Of pure happiness, and um, uh, what's interesting about this is, is that when they were trying to, the, it was very hard for the helicopter to find the the the, the cantilever because it's just one little window mm -hmm. on the big huge building, mm -hmm. and so they decided they would wave, you know, a shirt or a flag first, so the helicopter could see it and the photographer could get ready, right? Right? I'm with so you. What's interesting about that? is that the people who jumped from the buildings were, A, mostly located around floor 91, and B, they waved flags before they jumped. Now, I'm trying to figure out what they were waving a flag They for. waved what? Shirts, maybe? Some uh -huh. kind of cloth. Uh -huh. You can see it in the films. Uh -huh. As if to... To be honest with you, there's no real point for that person to be waving something out the window. Hell no. But if you wanted to signal to a photographer on the ground, it would be great. Uh, because weird. they would see it, uh -huh. point towards it, uh -huh. and then the bodies came out. Bodies that was never recovered, by the way. Very and, um, and then this would also explain 
Well, what this does also is it explains why there's no phones, no desks, mm -hmm. nothing in the rubble. Hold on no, a sec. No Hold business on. supply. That's, that's, uh, let me come back to that. We've got a break. We'll come right back. Very interesting. Jay Widener and I will be right with you. Okay, and back with Jay Widener. All this talk, and we look, if we can stand it, stomach it, at the nation's capital and the alleged president, the imposter in chief. And what do you see back there, Jay, except deceit, treason, treachery? Oof. I see a, I see a, uh, I see a man who would stomp us into the ground in a second without a moment's thought. Yeah. And he scares me to live in death. And the way they used that Arizona shooting and turned it into a, a pogrom against people who weren't even involved Correct. in it, uh, it's, it, it reminded me of Stalin. And it just, it just it really scared me. And to be honest with you, I actually started looking at uh, someplace else to live in the last couple of weeks just because I got yeah. so scared about what they're doing. There's really and, nowhere uh, to go. Know, There's nowhere to go. Well, there isn't, and uh, there is even worse in other places. That's the problem for anyone who's traveled. Anybody know. who goes to another country will... What what rights we have left here will not be guaranteed there. And any <clears throat> intel or, or letter agency can go into any country and take anybody out or cause any pro any kind of problem you can imagine. Loot you, yeah. steal your life savings. Good luck. Yeah. Uh, so, no, running is not the answer. Not saying you're running, but just for the others no, out there. No, there's no way to go. No. But I'll get back to these uh, these uh, um, Israeli art students. And yeah, when you said there was no no uh, office furniture to speak of in the rubble, you were absolutely nothing. correct. No, and yeah, I noticed nothing. that. Yeah. Yeah, and there had to be uh, well, you know, just a brief count about seventy thousand phones, let's say, sure. uh, in the buildings. Okay, not one. You know, and 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 then and then you know, when you start looking at the scant customer list, I mean, the uh, rental list for the people who are renting space, and you realize that they got about ten, fifteen percent of the thing covered. Some floors never had occupants, and I'm not talking like just a few floors. Mm -hmm. I'm talking like floor after floor never had an occupant. Well, William Rodriguez is the last man out who was actually in charge of the. Yeah. One of the towers, he was in charge of one whole side of it, the elevators, all the stairwells, the emergency preparedness, everything. He talked about the, I guess it was one floor that was completely off. He couldn't even get in it. He had a master key for everything. He couldn't get in it. And every day, the noises continued. UPS would deliver things. Nobody was allowed in there. That's where all the explosives were housed, and that's where the work was uh, centered. Probably. And emanated and they, from. And it looks like they may have uh, 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 t put tons and tons of concrete bags up on some of the top floors to cause that initial um, huge explosion. Um, it was just a dust cloud to cover everything up as it was falling apart. Oh, so very interesting. To, yeah. yeah, you couldn't get in very close. Mm. <laughs> and um, what's interesting is that, uh, um, you know, we, if you have these buildings and um, uh, most of the floors aren't being used and uh, they fall at free fall speed, you have to start asking yourself, you know, what were these buildings? What were they really? And, you know, what were they being used for? I have building number seven, which fell. It didn't get occupied until 1997. Mm -hmm. Yet it sat there from 1974 to 1997 unoccupied. 25 years almost. Yeah, and and then it gets occupied by the CIA, by uh, uh -huh. um, the New well, York C City. Giuliani's uh, Emergency Command Center was in. Yeah, it. and uh, and you start looking at all this, and you know you have to wonder if the World Trade Center wasn't being used for some kind of psychotronic weapons or or something. Well, it was, was an house. It was sighted. Yeah, it was an and asbestos. I'm not sure if the whole thing wasn't a scam from the beginning. Were there really supports? Huh. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, here we have a University of Tennessee architecture, the head of the architecture department, who actually had seen it, you know, and, and said, no, there were no supports. I didn't know so, this. 
Yeah, it was a unistructure building, she said. Hmm. Each part of the outside was holding the whole thing together. And, really? Um, the 13 core supports were not there? That's what she's saying. Huh. And, 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 she, and she said the building is a, essentially a hollow building. Now, then all of a sudden, the free fall speed makes total and complete sense. Um, and, or uh, something had to be used to pulverize those 13 well, that's columns. that's for sure. We with know a, that happened. A micro nuke. Uh, yeah. That's Dr. Or, Ed Ward's work. And, yeah. Well, you know, what were these students really doing? And, and sure. why? And why did a 747 full of Israeli nationals take off, what is it, four or five hours later, six hours later, for Tel Aviv from New York? Just yeah, took, off, well, took them all out of there. It was an extraction of the team that pulled this off, basically. Yeah, it looks like it. And, That's uh, what people are saying that, that are up on it's this. It's pretty brilliant, um, diabolically so. But uh, So then the question arises, was the World Trade Center just built to become an object that they could use at any point to uh, get what they want by destroying Well, they it? tried to knock it down in 91, wasn't it? What, what, or ni- what year yeah, was that 91? Yeah, they tried. I mean, it was pretty much a silly t- attempt, but... And the FBI was actually paid the guy to do sure. it. But, um, <laughs> but, just, that's uh, weird. You know, it, 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 the whole thing is just it just reeks. And uh, I just I'm totally fascinated by the fact that these companies all of a sudden in '98 began filling up the World Trade Center, not filling it up, but giving it the 30 percent of uh, the people right before, you know, three years before. Now mm-hmm. here's the kicker to the whole thing. We all know that the victims receive, you know, the families of the victims receive money from the government. But what most people don't know is that there was a far bigger fund that went to the corporations that got hurt by 911. Okay? So all these companies, said from 98 on, started getting into the World Trade Center. Now, I'm not saying that they knew anything, but, um, you know, qui bono? And uh, follow the money, and I'm telling you that uh, I'd be mighty suspicious of that list of companies that's on that site, you know, as far as I can tell, because uh, they certainly got in at the right time. They probably got out with billions of dollars uh, from the government, and this $36 billion or $360 billion fund that was set aside for the corporate victims. Mm-hmm. So you can mm-hmm. kind of start backtracking here. Mm-hmm. And really starting to see a kind of a pattern developing, and the disturbing part of this pattern is, is that it was going on long before George Bush was president. Um, it was well, a, the dry run, of course, was the, the Murrah Building, and they, yeah, they watched oh that, God. and I mean, it was all there. This, the whole thing was a progression of events to test yeah, to see what kind of. believe a little bit more. Sure. Yeah. Sure. You know, okay. Well, they bought that one. Now let's do this one. Yeah. First, they bought the Kennedy assassination, so I guess they'd buy anything. You know. <laughs> what do you What do you see happening this year, Jay? I mean, it's well, so it's see. so amazing the amount of material coming at us from all directions. But what do you What is your Do you have any real intuitive ideas as to where we're going to be? Well, I think the revolution. There's going to be a uh, well, beginning of a worldwide. Uh, insurrection. It's like Tunisia, but it'll Yeah, spread. I think that's the beginning, mm-hmm. and I think that you're going to see uh, commensurate food shortages really getting very serious, and, uh, and I think you're going to... Uh, I've, yeah, I've got a number of stories. A very bad place. Yeah, I've got a number of stories about food. We're yeah. run, literally one harvest away from a yeah. world catastrophe. And I, I implore everyone to go buy some food, you know, buy bags of rice, buy beans, those things that are dry that can stay put for a long time and uh, get close to a water supply. Take care of your family because I guarantee you one thing, those people in charge do not care about us and want us to die. I don't know how much more clear they can be about it. Uh, yeah. yeah, and uh, so I mean, I don't feel good about it. No, I don't. I, and I think that they could pull another. They're going to pull more things like the shooting in Arizona. I think there's going to be more of that. They're going to do everything they can to get us to react so that they can hit us. That's the plan. It's sort of like the uh, nagging wife who keeps yelling and yelling and yelling until the husband erupts, and then she says, "See, it's all your fault." You know, this is what they're doing. This is their plan. Kind of a <laughs> passive aggressive kind uh-huh. of. Sickness. Uh-huh. Well, meanwhile, yeah. Obama keeps partying on, 
Oh and my God. having a good time, and he's Losing not. Weight. I, I don't know. Yeah, he's lost what twenty five pounds or something. He does not look good. I'm worried about him. Too much nose nose candy or something. Something. I I believe the nose candy part actually. Yeah, then, I think he's yeah. just gotten to the point where he realizes the game is over. He's lost the magic he had that was given to him that he was able to <laughs> convince the people existed. That, that that's gone. Yeah. And so what's he do now? He just he's just self indulgent, just in, just having a good time. Well, same people that put him in office, those same people that made Oprah a billionaire, and uh, same people. And they, they they have a plan, and their plan yeah. is to uh, is to destroy.